everybody and all welcome back to the blu-ray hunter i'm the blu-ray hunter jonathan moody and uh sorry i'm gonna get this going um this around see all right hey hey here we go uh hey everybody and welcome back to the blu-ray hunter i'm the blu-ray hunter jonathan a moody and we're here to talk to you about the second this is part two of the films that uh the Criterion films that I haven't seen, or, yeah, I haven't watched yet. And so we're going to get into that. And this, uh, we're going to start with the movie that I'm going to watch, uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, if not uh, later this week coming up. Um, first off, it is The Thin Red Line. I want to watch it, I'm hoping tomorrow, but if not Sunday, uh, which today is Friday, tomorrow will be Saturday. Um, so, all right. Next is Romeo and Juliet. I'm hoping to watch this soon. Um, this is the very controversial one. Uh, that's why I bought it this year, because I knew it was very controversial. Um, next is a bunch that I have in this collection. Um, it's the America Lost and Found, the ABC one. Uh, the BBS story. I said ABC. The BBC story. Uh, the only one I'm missing, actually, is... Well, I have seen Easy Rider. Forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, I've seen five easy pieces, but I can't seem to find that in that. So it's around um, my my room. Uh, but then it's also got, uh, let's see, Head, which I need to watch. It's the, uh, uh, was it the uh, B, uh, the Monkeys movie. I uh, also need to see Drive, he said, In a Safe Place, and King of Marvin's Gardens. So, uh those I will watch as soon as I can. Next, I ha I started watching. I did not finish, so I don't count it as a movie I've seen all the way through, which is the Videodrome. It's not that um, it wasn't my cup of tea or something. I literally was busy that day, so I thought I could watch it. Then I got into it, and I just I couldn't. I couldn't focus. There was too much stuff going on. So you might see my dog in a second. He's going to go, well, he's not tall enough to be seen. Sorry. Let's see in a second if you look down. Here you go. Here you go. No, babe, the water's right there. The water's right there. This is what I have to deal with when I'm housing. Um, all right my family all right next next is a movie i've seen uh but i haven't seen this version of it and it's been a while so miller's crossing the uh joel and ethan cohen movie i really can't wait to dive into that another movie i watched like a good amount of but i just i didn't get into it so i need to rewatch all of it uh is the in-laws my mom said she was cracking up at that movie and loving it i don't know maybe i'll like it i just i for some reason got i watched it for a little bit and then just kind of started drifting off so i might have been tired or i might have been bored i don't know but it wasn't something like i laugh out loud funny that i was expecting it to be i guess you know so let me put the light was that up lord sorry you're gonna see me do shit like that the whole time all right so next is shortcuts a movie that uh once again i haven't seen um well obviously this is all i haven't seen um it, it's just a movie that i want to watch i just really got to be in the mood to watch like it's long it's like it's over three hours 187 minutes like literally over three hours so i i don't know if i'm like when I'll be like ready to just sit down and watch something or just like take it in, in parts, like watch an hour and a half of it or something or two hours and then watch the last hour later. Uh, I may have to do that because I want to watch it, but it's so long. Uh, uh, then red line is the same way. So uh, the other one is the hidden Tr fortress, which once again, I haven't finished watching. Uh, I want to, I have plans to. It's just I haven't 
I haven't. Another one I haven't watched, period, which I want to see at some point. Just, once again, too long. Uh, 142 minutes, I guess it's not as long. Um, but it's also really something, like, depressing and sad. Something that it's not going to be easy watch. And that is Come and See. It's a Russian movie about, like, World War II on Russia's side, I think. is from what I've... Or World War I. One of the, one of the World Wars... Uh, and uh, Russia's, you know, the stuff happening in Russia, or whatever I think. Is that, is that what I said? Or German. Uh, the legendary film from Soviet director uh, Liam Kiel, it's a census-shattering plunge into the dehumanizing horrors of war as Nazi forces encroach a, a, on a small village in what is known as Belarus. So it's a Soviet, yeah, it's it's kind of told through the Soviet side. You kind of always see uh, war movies kind of told either through the Nazis or the Americans. You barely ever see the Russian side of things, I, I don't think. I've, ne I've never really watched that much of them that did that. Um, the Last Temptation of Christ, I need to finish. I was watching it uh, and just didn't end up finishing it, um, but I, I plan to. Once another another one I haven't finished, which is Straw Dogs. Um, I it just like I get busy, and so I'm I'm gonna be dedicating my time to finishing these off. So don't worry. Movie I haven't seen yet uh, that I want to see, just haven't watched it yet is Medium Cool. Medium Cool. Um, I, I believe uh, Howard Wexler directed this. Haskell Haskell Wexler. And he is the uh, he's a DP who I think this might be his directorial debut, if not like his only film. But uh, I don't think it's his only film, but I think it was his might have been his directorial debut. Do you want to come up here? Do you want to come say hello? Come here. Come here. Go, go give you. Ah. OK, this is my dog, everybody. He's been sort of feeling like he's not getting enough attention. Everybody say hello, Rocky. You'll say hello. Okay. Put you right here. Actually, I'm going to put you on the chair over here, okay? You can watch me because you got to sit down. Okay. Next is swing time. Interestingly enough, I bought this because I was planning to do like an AFI 100. And here's the deal. I may not do that because I may not be around for two more years for Fleury Hunter. Um, I'm I'm giving myself to the end of the year, and then I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to continue going down this path and um, keep doing the show, or if I'm just going to take a break from this one um, and whatnot. Uh, I will still have my Instagram up, you know, where I'll be posting all the different movies I get and stuff like that, but. I don't know if I'll have the YouTube channel forever and I, um, but I have so many other podcasts and other things. So you're not going to miss me. You're just going to miss possibly this. And I mean, for a while I was actually putting the Blu-ray Hunter stuff on Indie Film Cafe. So I may still do that if, you know, I may switch it back over to Indie Film Cafe. I don't know. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be a thing where by December of this year, we're going to figure out figure it out because I have no idea if I'm still having fun doing it like this. It's just, it's really hard to have like a, a million. I've got this uh, indie film cafe and horror film lovers uh, YouTube channels. I have too many YouTube channels to keep up with. And, you know, I've got to concentrate on ones that are, are doing really well. And indie film cafe itself does really well because we have multiple shows going at once. So uh, unlike this, where I, I do plan, I might introduce a new show coming this fall. We'll see. So, uh, coming up, Magnificent Ambersons. All right. A uh, Orson Welles movie I haven't watched yet. So, I got all, I've got, I'm getting a bunch of Orson Welles movies and I'm planning to watch all of them and reviewing all of them. So, there will be like a Orson Welles Appreciation Month or something where I will. Uh, I will post a bunch of reviews of the different movies and I'll talk about them and I'll talk about other things with Orson Welles and, and whatnot. So, you know, and it'll be fun. Um, but I'm not sure when that's happening. I've got to watch. I'm going to have to start watching them all and start recording uh, 
re, you know, reviews before I uh, post them and, and put them out there. So Chimes at Midnight is another one I want to see. Pass of Glory, that's another movie I want to see with uh, from Stanley Kubrick. City Lights, a Chaplin film I haven't watched yet. I do plan to. Oof, this movie. 159 minutes. Breaking the Waves, a movie I've... It's a digipack, too, which is pretty cool if you look at that. All that stuff. Um, Lars Van Trier. Um, I've heard it's sort of, I don't know, just really good. Just really good kind of dark movie. Um, I'll check that out. Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront. Um, I So I started watching this movie, did not finish. There's a lot. You'll notice a trend. A lot of films. I started to watch but didn't finish. Okay, so this is one of the box, the other box that I was telling you guys about. I had two box sets, uh, and I watched all of the movies from them. Um, so I have seen one of the three movies in this box set. This is the Guillermo del Toro box set, which has all three of his like first big movies: um, Kronos, The Devil's Backbone, and um, Pan's Labyrinth. I have not seen Pan's Labyrinth. Um, now, I'm going to say this, and then Paul's going to hear this, and Paul's going to go, oh, means you have to watch Pan's Labyrinth for, you know, criteria watch. And so I almost feel like I want to wait till we do a criteria watch on it before I see it, um, just because I, I want to experience it like that. But we'll see. So I haven't seen Kronos, and I haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth, but I, we did do Devil's Backbone. That was like the second episode of Criterion Watch, and I really liked it. All right, so now here comes to my 4Ks I haven't watched. Now, some of these I've seen, some of them I haven't, but I haven't seen them on 4K, so I counted that as uh, movies I haven't seen. So this is a movie I haven't seen, period, and I want to watch, Mulholland Drive. I've heard nothing but good things about it, and it's on 4K. You know, this, this, this is something I'm going to complain about. I don't want to make a whole video on it, but this is a little annoying. See this little sticker here? Those are on the um, on the packaging, right? And when you go to get them off the packaging, you screw them up, and they look pretty bad. And I'm like, I don't even know if I want them. the stickers on them. They're going to look that bad. I don't know. Um, I'm not as picky, but like... Still, that's kind of messed up. Uh, next is uh, Uncut Gems, another movie I haven't watched. Now, I haven't watched it for one main reason, and that's because every view from anybody who's seen this movie on Criterion or whatever has said the same exact thing, which is that this movie is uh, anxiety-inducing, and I already have like mad anxiety. So I don't know like how this movie will affect me. I'm kind of excited, but I'm kind of nervous. So there's that like I, I'm like I'm pushing it off kind of thing. But eventually, I'm gonna need to just sit down and just watch it and and whatnot. I've heard really good things though. Uh, another 4K um, that I just got, so it'll be in my uh, haul video, uh, which is Wings of Desire. Um, Wings of Desire. Uh, we saw that for Criterion Watch in episode two for the season. And uh, it wasn't Paul's first pick originally. Paul had something else in mind. And then we didn't do that. So he he couldn't find it or something. Or he brought... Yeah, something happened. And so he brought uh, Wings of Desire as the, uh, the that movie. And uh, so we chose that. And then in the beginning of it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. Like, it seemed kind of boring. And then all of a sudden, I really got into it. And it's a great movie. Vin Vendors does a fantastic job. Peter Falk, and probably one, other than Princess Bride, probably one of my favorite movies. By the way, I do have Princess Bride. That is a movie I've seen. Uh, I'm getting the 4K in September. I let my brother borrow it uh, so that he can let one of his friends borrow it. And then... He never returned it, so I'm just going to tell him to keep it. So, 
Uh, next is The Seventh Seal, um, a movie I have seen. I haven't seen on 4K yet. Another movie I've seen, I have not seen the 4K of it yet. It just came out, and I'm excited. I might, if I might do an actual 4K review of it, is Bre- uh, Breathless by Jean-Luc Godard. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in the review, too. I was not a fan of that movie when I first watched it. Like, um, it was beautifully shot, beautifully made. And it, I mean, it's breathtaking. John Luc Guitard knows how to photograph stuff. Um, I just didn't like any of the characters and it, the movie itself didn't draw me in. Uh, Band Apart, um, which I think is also Guitard, um, was a, a, a much better movie. And, uh, you know, uh, Band, Band of Outsiders. Um, this movie was just kind of like, I don't know. I, I I didn't really I didn't really connect with it as much, but I got it on 4K because it did look incredibly beautiful. And I didn't own it already, so I was like, all right, well I'll buy it. You know, maybe it'll maybe the movie itself will grow on me. Once again, a lot of these movies sort of just don't grow on me yet. You know, in the beginning. Another movie I've seen years ago when I was like a kid, but I haven't watched since is the adventures of bear munchausen i do like if i recall correctly i remember like there being like a blimp or something or whatever something crazy happening uh but i believe like um robin williams is in this movie and i mean all the terry gilliam does all his uh terry gilliam does all his uh um commentary and stuff and uh so yeah um i just I'm very happy to own this movie. A movie I've seen years ago, uh, when not when it first came out or anything, I don't think. I think it was a little older. But uh, I watched this movie, uh, Thumb and Louise, uh, Ridley Scott. Like, and I was listening to some of the commentary for the Blu-ray, and I was like, Ridley Scott, like, he he's really good just to listen to. Uh, he, if he does like a master class, I wanna I wanna check that out because i i really love just hearing what he has to say about filmmaking the fact that he grew up uh doing documentaries and then made these and stuff i just want to re listen to the commentary at some point just sit down and just like hear him talk uh there's a few movies where i was watching them and going oh man i just want to like the um sydney lamette i think does commentary for like fail safe and all these guys, like, they just know how to freaking uh, get you, you know, and everything. Speaking of a filmmaker who knows how to get you, Martin Scorsese with After Hours. Um, wow. I have not seen this. Um, so I haven't seen this 4K yet. I was watching it, and then I ended up getting really sleepy. And it wasn't the movie's fault. I just, you know, and I've seen it years ago when it was on, like, cable and stuff. But I don't think I watched the whole thing. So I definitely want to rewatch this and uh, and everything. I it's really funny because this Paul I picked up both After Hours and Chili Scenes of Winter, and both were produced by the same companies and stuff. So I think that's really cool that Criterion's getting uh, that that company, which originally was called Triple Play, ended up being called Double Play Productions, and it was like Griffin Dunn and um, uh, who's the uh, Amy Robinson um, were the ones who really did this, and then uh, there was another. Uh, there was another actor who, uh, cause that was it. Like a bunch of actors kind of created their own company and everything. I wish they had done more. Honestly, um, I wish they were doing stuff today because that's sort of what we need. Um, but last, but certainly not least, as a movie of oh nope two two more. Okay, so second to last, but definitely not least as double indemnity which i was watching some of and just never didn't get to finish but i was liking it loving the the dialogue is just fantastic in this movie i need to re-watch it and then do a review um and then uh my reviews are really short as opposed to like the criteria watch reviews which are more lengthy and more get more involved um last but not least 
for sure is a movie that I've been wanting to see, just haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet. It's on 4K. Uh, it's very long. It's Is this the longest we've had? Like 201 minutes? Jesus. Uh, it is Malcolm X. Um, Spike, a Spike Lee joint. Yep, he's still calling it Spike Lee joint. Um, I It's very historical. I remember owning the movie on Blu-ray, never watching it yet and stuff and it's just a movie that like i think i have to be in the mood to watch you know um just haven't done that yet haven't gotten the mood to watch it so but i will and all that will happen don't worry um so there you go uh by the end of this year should have all of those movies watched uh that's the plan by december so try to hold me to that because i tend to say these things and then all of a sudden oops I didn't get a chance to do that. So anyway, thank you guys for checking this out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know, guys, what you get. God, I can't talk tonight. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And let me know uh, if there's any specific movies that you guys recommend that I get for the next sale. Because I think I'm done unless I get one more 4K, which I don't really want to get one more 4K. It's just, it's just, the sale you know and stuff so um i think i'm gonna wait because uh i ha i will have um i think i have 12 4ks right now of criterion so i want to get um i have 11 or 12 something like that so i want to get like eight more on the uh by by the end of the year and stuff so um have 20 uh criterion 4ks and then I have a whole bunch. I, I have probably close to a hundred, if not over a hundred. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get all of them. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a weird fucking collector. I want all of Criterion, I want all of Kino Lorber, and I want all of all the boutique if I can get them. Now, Kino Lorber, I don't know. Maybe there's some ones in there that I'm like, eh. But I probably if I can get every single Kino Lorber. I will. But the beautiful thing about these movies is they all have the spine numbers and this like this is 1160. Uh so it's very easy to kind of keep track and figure out which ones you need, which I think more companies, boutique companies should do that because it really does help decide like how many we have and how many we need. I think um Vestron Video does that as well and a couple other companies do it. So it's very smart. Um, anyway, that's it. That's all my movies. Holy cow. Uh, so, oh, I I did miss Tulane Blacktop, by the way, which I do, I did watch. So I have, and I don't know where that went. So Princess Bride and Tulane Blacktop are missing in my collection, but they're here. You know, one's somewhere else, but the other one's like literally here at this house. Just got to find it. Uh, and put it back in the collection. So thank you guys so much. I'm going to be doing some organizing and alphabetizing and stuff soon and uh, get it all organized uh, for next haul and everything, um, which I will be doing. We'll be doing more Blu-ray hauls, and there will be criterions each month uh, for that. If there might be like three, there might be 10. You know, I won't know until it happens. There are a few that I've listed on here already that I think will be on the next haul video. Some stuff like that. So you'll see them when you see them. So anyway, thank you guys for uh, checking this out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, see you later. Bye.